So this week we are talking about strings and lists. And really we're talking mostly about strings. We're talking a little bit about lists and collections so that you can understand the basis of what a string is. Why are strings important? Unless you tell it otherwise, everything Python assumes everything is a string. That's just the underlying assumption that Python, the Python interpreter will make. So we have some new concepts. We have a concept of a string, which is another type, it's a container for data, and in this particular case. It is a container for alphanumeric, more than alphanumeric actually, characters in a sequence. A list, oh goodness, I'm sorry, I will correct this slide. A list is a collection of any data in a sequence and slice is a way of creating a list from another list or a string from another string. Let's do this again. We have some new keywords. We have the keyword del, D-E-L, and that is to delete an element from a list or to delete a list. And we have the open and close square brackets. And those indicate to Python that the type you are using is a list. We have some new functions. And these are, by the way, just a very small amount of the functions that you have to available to you through Python to deal with lists and strings. Um, and I have concentrated on these because you're going to have to use these in your labs. So we have split, which is to create a list from a string. And, what, and Python will do this automatically. You just have to tell it how. Um, find, again, I don't know why this copy, and I'll fix these slides before I put them up. Find is a function that basically allows you to find the first index of something in a string. So a character in a string, you want to find it, Python will return the index. And I'll type that up more formally in a bit. Uh, count. Count the number of times a character appears in a string. Remove. Removes an element from a list. Just completely gets rid of it. And format. Create a new string from an existing string which contains format specifiers. What's a string? A string is an ordered collection of characters surrounded by quotes. That is it. That is all a string is. A string is immutable, which means it may not be changed. So you cannot alter a string. If I have a Python script, and that Python script has a variable called myster, I know it's a variable. It's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. On the right-hand side of a single equal sign, in quotes, are the words, this is a string. So myster has assigned to it a list. That list is a special list called a string. A string has a list of characters in it. And it cannot be changed. Now, it's something important to remember. You can't just pull the capital S out and put a new S in. It won't work. You have to create a new string from an existing string using string functions to, to be able to alter or modify a string. Now, a string is identified in Python by matching quotes. So I have an open uh, quote, an open double quote, and a closed double quote. So that's a string, and Python will recognize that as a string. What's not a string? OK, so what you see in your script is this is a string. There is a missing closed quote. You are going to get a nasty red syntax error from Python. And I see this happen. Students, it's very easy when you're programming because programming is about minutia. It's about the little things that they get frustrated when they're trying to do their project and they're having all these weird errors. And the other thing you're going to find as you start to go through and use PyCharm more is that Python's error messages 
aren't always very useful. They don't really always tell you where the problem is. Python will tell you where it picks up an issue. Your problem might actually be somewhere several lines before that. And we'll look at some examples of that tonight. Now, this is also a syntax error. I have an open double quote, but I have a closing single quote. So those quotes are not matched. And Python will basically give you another syntax error. Now, this is an error because we have three double quotes. You have an open double quote, and in the middle, after a space, you have another double quote. And at the end, you have a closing double quote. So there are three quotes. And what Python is going to say is it's going to assume that my stir equals this is a space quote. And then string quote, it's going to say, I don't know what to do with that. So here's just, um, so for every open quote, you must have a closing quote of the same type. All right, let's just correct those syntax errors really quickly because we have a lot to do tonight. So if you have a missing close quote, you simply just add a close quote of the same type. I have this as a string. I have an opening double quote. I have a closing single quote. To fix that, I simply change it to a closing double quote. And then this is a string. I uh, maybe I really do want that middle quote in there, that double quote. So what do I do? I can escape it using the backslash or the slash, backslash. I can never remember. I apologize. And that tells Python to assume that that quote right after that slash is actually to be, to be a, used as a character not as a close for a string. That's how you do it. If the closing quote is of the same type, um, of a closing quote of the same type is inside a string, you must escape it. And that's what the escaping is. It's that slash. Let's look at order. I said it was an ordered collection of characters surrounded by quotes. So what do we mean by ordered? What we mean by ordered is Python in computer memory not just gives us the characters, but gives us a hidden index. That hidden index has one number for every position in the list starting at zero. This is one of those places that students can get a little bit um, it can become confusing because all counting in Python for any type of list, and string is a list, starts at zero. So I have, even though I have 16 characters in this is a string, my hidden index goes from zero to 15. So just when you're be, be um, cognizant of that, when you're dealing with your lists. But this is what I meant by ordered. And, and you'll notice those numbers are in order and they always stay in order. They're, it always goes from zero to whatever the highest number is in order. So, and you can, uh, you can look at this as I have a list and there is a number associated with every single element in that list. Okay, you read this as T is at index 0, H is at index 1, I is at index 2, and so forth. Now, why are these indexes important? Because this is how you're going to get to individual characters in a string. And more importantly, this is how you're going to get to individual elements in a list. So you have to understand and, and have that concept of a number being associated with every element in a list. And for a string, it's a number being associated with every single character in the string. Every character in a string has a numerical placeholder. Let's call it the index. Okay. 
a l now now we're going to switch views just a bit. We're going to go into lists because it's important to understand lists before we can truly understand strings. Now a list is a collection of elements and an element can be anything. It can be another list. It can be a dictionary. It can be an object identifier. It can be a string. It can be a number. It can be a boolean. It can be just about anything you can define. Now, lists are mutable, which means they can be changed. So let's just take a look at some of the lists. Lists start with an opening and closing square bracket. Um, a list contains an element, and an element can be anything. List elements are ha all list elements, just like the strings have corresponding indexes. List elements have corresponding indexes. Um, and list elements are separated by a comma. So if I look at my little Python script here, I have my list. My list is a variable because it's on the left hand side of a single equal sign. The right hand side of a single equal sign. I have an open square bracket. I have the word Lisa in quotes, so it's a string. I have a comma. I have the number 42 and a comma and the number 3.14. In computer RAM, what I see is a name of my list, and that name is associated with those three elements and their index. So Lisa is at index 0, 42 is at index 1, and 3.14 is at index 2. Notice there are three elements in the list, but my last index number is 2 because I start my indexes at 0 always. List format. So let's talk about specifically the list format. Lists always start with an open and close square bracket. Inside the brackets, there are pieces of information separated by a comma. Each piece of information has to be separated by a comma. Now notice there is no comma after 3.14. That's because you're not separating it from another element. 3.14 is the last element in this list, so it does not need a comma after it. Um, and all lists will be... Yeah, all lists start with an open and closed square bracket. Now you can have them empty, you can have them populated. This happens to be a populated list. And we'll go and we'll look at an empty list in just a minute. The book doesn't talk to this very much, but I think it's an important concept when it comes to lists or strings or dictionaries. Um, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in Chapter 4. No. And four and six. It's called CRUD. Create, read, update, delete. These are the four things you can do to a list or a string. You can create a list, which just makes it, makes it new. You can read from a list, so you're getting a piece of information out of that list. You can update a list or modify an element within the list. And you can delete. You can remove elements from within a list, or you can remove the entire list. So when you're thinking about what you can do to a list, think about CRUD. Create, read, update, delete. So let's look at create real quick. Create is, um, if I want to create an empty list, I have a variable on the left-hand side of the single equal sign, in this case, my, my empty list. But on the right-hand side, I just have an opening and closing square bracket. That simply means that there's nothing in the list. The list exists. I can add things to the list if I want. I can't remove anything from the list because there's nothing to remove. But that's what this means. This is just an empty list when it's an open and closed square bracket. A populated list is... Um, a list with data elements in it. I have a variable called my list. It's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. On the right-hand side of that single equal, single equal sign is an open square bracket, the word Lisa, number 42, number 3.14, 3.14.
and a closed square bracket. So I have created a populated list. Those are the two ways you can create a list. You can create it with data or without data. Python doesn't care how you create it as long as the syntax is correct. Read. So I want to know how to get at data in my list. I want to know how to get at, at the word Lisa or, for, uh, or the number 42. And when I, in 4, in Module 4, we're going to actually learn how to loop through lists and look at everything in it and make decisions based on that stuff. But for right now, I have my Python script. I have my list. It's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. On the right-hand side of the single equal sign is my list with my three elements. So how do I get at a single element. I don't want the whole list. I just want to print the word Lisa. Well, I do that. Well, here's my list in memory by using the variable name my list and the index number. So to get Lisa, I use the variable my list. I have an open square bracket, a zero, and a closed square bracket. When I do it this way, without any equal signs in between, I am telling Python, go get me the element in the list from index 0. So it's going to go, it's going to go to index 0, it's going to pick up Lisa, and it's going to, in this case, print it to the console, because I'm using it in a print statement. The same with, I'm sorry about that, that's my dog coughing. Um, the same with um, wanting to get the last element from the list. The last element from the list, hold on just a second. Apologize for that. Come here, girl. Come here. It's okay. Okay. Sorry about that. If I want to get the last element from the list, in this case at index 2, and I want to print 3.14, I have my list, open square bracket, the index number, close square bracket. Now you'll notice there's no equal sign in there because we're not doing an assignment. We're simply looking at information inside the list, and that's how we get to it. So update, I want to change a list. And I can do this for a list. I cannot do it for a string. Let's say I just wanted to modify a value. I have my list again, the variable my list is on the left hand side of a single equal sign. On the right hand side is the list that I created. We saw this on the last slide. And if I say print my list of one, I'm going to output to the console the number 42. So my list of index one is the value 42. But I'm going to change it now. I'm going to say my list at index 1 is now the value of 25. So if I print my list of 1 again, I'm going to get the value 25. So again, when you look at the syntax, it is the name of the list. In this case, I have an open square bracket an index value and a closed square bracket. And then I have an equal sign. So that element in the list is being treated as if it's a variable because it is. It's a space in memory. It's a bucket in memory that I can put data. So in this case, I'm putting 25. And so when I go back and I look at element 1 now, it's 25 because I changed it. Update is another way to update a list. You can append data to a list. So here we have a new notation. So first I have my list equals the list that I had before. Now the second line of this Python script is my list dot append added in quotes. Well, what in the world is this? This is a dot notation. The dot notation basically says to Python, hey Python, the thing to the left of the dot is what I want you to do whatever action I'm telling you to do. So for a list, I have a function called append. 
append will add a new element to the end of the list. So Python is looking at this and saying, all right, I have a known list called my list. It's been previously defined. So I want to use the append function and add the word added to the end of my list. So that's what the dot notation does. If you see any dot notation, it is saying Python perform this function against the thing to the left of the dot. So I have my name, I have my values here. So I have 0, 1, and 2 with all my values. I have my list. Now I'm going to do the append. And what the append is going to do is it's going to lengthen the list by 1 and give me the opportunity to put the word added into the list. Now if I print the list, I get added because I have 3 now. I have 0, 1, 2, and 3. Had I tried to do that on the original my list, I would have gotten an error. And in just a minute, I'm going to show you what those errors are. Delete. You can delete by the index, or you can delete a whole list. Del is used to remove an element from a list by the index number. So again, I have my list, Lisa 42, 3.14. And I want to delete Lisa from this list. I just want to clear out that whole element. So what do I do? I use the del keyword to the left of my list. And in this case, I have to give it the index. So it's my list of 0. And what happens is my, Lisa goes away. Now I have 42 and 3.14. And Python automatically re-indexes. So 0 is now the index for the value 42. Because Python will automatically re-index everything to the right of the element that you removed. OK, delete by value. There is also a function called remove. And will remove will remove the first element in the list matching the value. So remove, we again use the dot notation. The dot notation says, hey, Python, I want you to get rid of the first instance of the number 42 in my list. That's how you read that. So if I look, I have name and value. And when I go to remove it, Python's going to say my list. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to remove value 42. So I get rid of it. Those get squished over. And I re-index everything to the right of the element that was removed. So if I print my list of 1, it is now 3.14. So if you remember anything, when you are removing or deleting, you have to remember that it's going to re-index, and it's going to change the length of your list. And that is important because you can get nasty errors if you don't remember those things. All right, so we're going to look at a script called crud.py. OK, let me see. Okay. So we're going to look at a script called crud.py. And crud.py is a little script I created to show crud. So um, we're just going to walk through this, and then I'm going to mess it up. And then we're going to see what happens when I mess it up so that you guys can see the um, what happens. And you won't be surprised if you're in a lab and you get an error message or if you're in a uh, project and you get an error message. So let me edit configuration, uh, module 2, crud. Oh, doesn't like the fact that I don't have an interpreter. 9 is OK. OK. So I think I did just configure my 
Python interpreter. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, as, as if you showed up last week, you know that I like to debug things. So we're going to walk through this code line by line, and we're going to see what's happening. So I'm going to start the debugger. And now here, we see a couple of things. First of all, let me make this a little bit bigger. I have a breakpoint here. A breakpoint is simply a place that you tell the Python debugger to stop. Just don't do anything. After, don't, don't execute the line, don't do anything after the line, just stop there. Um, oh, I hit the wrong, I hit the wrong step through. My bad. Let's do this. All right. Now, why isn't it doing that? I don't like this new format. I do not like this new format for PyCharm. I wish I had never, uh, updated it. Okay, there we go, finally. So here's what I wanted to say. This blue line says, I, the Python interpreter is saying, I am on this line of code, but I haven't yet executed this line of code. So right now this line of code is just a, a string. Nothing's happened on the computer. In a moment, something will happen on the computer. Well, what will happen on the computer? If we look down here under special values, what will happen when I step over is that all of a sudden I have a my empty list. My empty list has one property and that is the length of zero. Basically, a list and a dictionary and a string and an integer and a float and a Boolean are all underlying objects in Python. So they have properties. They have information about the string or the list or the integer or the float. In this case, my empty list has a length. All lists, in fact, have a length. And that length is zero because this is an empty list. There are no datas in it. Now, if I print empty list, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to just click on console. And I'm going to step over, and you will see that when I print my empty list, it's just the square bracket. So I'm going to go back over here to the debugger tab. And now I'm going to step over. And now I have, you'll see this new value, this new expression here, which is my list is is equal to Lisa 42 3.14. And I can see down here what everything is. I have a length of 3 at index 0. I have Lisa at index 1. I have 42 at index 2. I have 3.14. Why is this important? Because when you are doing your projects, when you are doing your assignments, if you're in PyCharm, you can step through them and see if you have any logic errors. And in fact, I encourage students to copy and paste, There's, if they're having problems, copy and paste from Zybooks into PyCharm because what PyCharm will do automatically is tell you if you have an error, a syntax error, and it will allow you to step through them. So I'm going to step over and I'm going to go back to the console because what I'm going to do is I'm going to print my list of 0 is Lisa, my list of 1 is 42, and my list of 2 is 3.14. Now I'm going to do the update that we saw. So now let's go back here and look at this debugger. I am going to replace my list at index 1 with 25. Watch what happens right down here. As I step over, now 1 is 25. Only thing I've done is swap the value out in memory. Now I'm going to print it. I can go over here to the console and see that I printed it. I printed my list and it has 25 in it. Now I'm going to append add. So let's go back to the debugger. Here's my list. If I step over it, I now have a length of 4. And at index 3, I have the word add. So I'm going to print my list again. 
and it's going to show all four. So now I am going to use uh, the um, function pop. Pop is just going to pop the first thing off the list. So if I step over, I have 0, 1, and 2. I'm sorry, I popped, yeah, I popped, popped it off the end. So I popped it off the top, but it popped it off the end. No, it didn't. No, 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 I'm sorry. It popped index 1. Sorry, wasn't thinking. So now it got rid of 42, which would have been the same as Dell, my list of 1. Um, and then I'm going to print my list again, so I can come over here and look at my list of all the things that I've done. Now I'm going to remove the word add. So I'm removing by value. I popped by index, but I remove by value. So I'm going to remove the first instance of the word add. And if we look at the list, now I'm down to two. And then I'm just going to print it at the console, and I'm done. So let me mess this up. Let me, let me do some things, OK? So I am going to add a line here to print my list of three. Now there is no three. We know at this point there's no three. But this is a very common error because not everybody is, remembers when they're programming, especially when they're new to Python, that your lists start at zero. So I'm going to just stop here this time, clear those breakpoints. I'm going to debug. We're here. Now, what's going to happen when I step over that line of code? Let's look at the console. There we go. So first of all, in PyCharm, I get the wonderful little lightning bolt. And then I get this whole big thing of stuff here that talks about exec, com compile, contents, file exec on line 18. And you're looking and saying, but line 18 is fine. Don't worry about it, because it's not talking about line 18 in your code. It's talking about line 18 in this exec file code. That one you don't want to worry about. This one is talking about your program, crud.py, line 15. Index error, list index out of range. So it's saying that this is wrong because you don't have four elements in your list. You only have three. And therefore, you have to end at two because we start at one. So that is one thing that you can run into. Um, what else did I want to show you? I think that's it for right now. We'll do some more stuff when we go back and look at strings. So let's go back and why did we talk about lists? Because a string is a list. That's why. And you can do most of what you can do to a list to a string in some fashion. If you want to change a string, you have to use a Python function that's going to make a copy of that string and in the process make the change that you want because you cannot alter a string. Um, and so we're going to have some new strings with the, the, some new functions using the dot notation. CRUD kind of applies. You can create and read just like a list. You can delete the entire string. You can't just delete an element out of the string. Or you can update, which is create a new string with the modification that you want. So let's see how to do that. To create a string, I create an empty string or a populated string. I create empty str is open and close quotes with nothing in between. It's empty. I create, sorry, this should have been my str. This is a string between the quotes. So now let's do the read thing from a string. So I have my name. This is a string. My str. 
It's going to go to the place in memory marked by Meister. And I'm going to get at the zero element, which is a T. Now I'm going to get the tenth element, which is an S. Or the, excuse me, not the tenth element. The element at index 10. So that's how I read a string, just like I read a list. Now I can create a new string from another string by doing something called string slicing. Now string slicing is not a function. String slicing is actually a way of enumerating the, um, the index numbers in the read to get you your new string. So I have Meister, this is a string, and I want a new string that only contains characters 10, 11, and 12. Because for this notation, the last index is not included. So it's one before the index. I know, frustrating, a little weird, but that's the way it is. So if I wanted to get str from Meister, I would have a new variable. In this case, the variable's name is my newster on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. On the right-hand side of a single equal sign, I have the existing variable Meister, which has a string in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 10th, 11th, and 12th elements from that string and create a brand new string and put it in my new stir. So that's exactly what happens. And then when I print my new stir, I print out str. Okay, you can create a new string from an existing string using slicing. When string slicing, the start index is inclusive, the end index is not inclusive. So you're not going to get STRI, you're going to get STR. Now, there are some string methods as well. Um, find the first index of a character in a string is the find function. You might just need that in a lab. Replace a portion of a string. You will use the replace function and you will replace whatever the characters are that you want to replace with whatever the characters are that you're planning to be the replacement. And then you're going to count the number of occurrences of a character in a string by using the count function. Now, all of these work on value, not on index. And they all use the dot notation. And they all return a new string. So they all have to be on the right-hand side of a single equal sign with a variable on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. So um, they're, they're just a multitude of these. So let's go and look at simple string real quick. And where's simple string? Simple string. Okay, so this is pretty much what we just saw in the slide um, with a few extra added things. So I have, this is a string which is Meister. Let's just debug it. Whoops, cancel. All right, uh, simple list, edit configuration. Uh, simple string. Okay, stop and rerun. So I have Meister, this is a string. So what's going to happen when I print Meister of zero? Well, it's going to print a T. If I look at the console, it's going to print a T. If I create a new stir, let's go to the debugger, I have Meister, I'm going to create my new stir from Meister, and what we'll see under here, under the variables, is my new stir, which is str. Now there's some additional notation that they talk about in Zybooks, and I'm just using an example here. This is create a new stir from Meister, 
starting at index 8 and going to the end. So in this case, my new stir is going to change to a string. That will get printed out. Again, I apologize for my dog. My new stir is now going to be everything from the beginning, so there's nothing in front of that quote, that colon, to the, to the, the value at index 3, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So when I do that, my new stir is going to be this. And I want to find the index of S. Now, this is a lowercase s, not an uppercase s. So the first index of that is going to be 3. Now, I'm going to replace this with that. So if I look at my, new, my stir, I have this as a string. And now I want to create a new string with that is a string. So my new stir is now going to have that is a string. And I want to count the number of times I occurs in the character. So the length, this is important because you're going to have to start using it. Len is a function for the length of a string or the length of anything. So the length is 16. Um, I don't think that there's anything else to do for this one. Um, so let's go back to the slides. Hold on, let me go back to the slides. And, oh, sorry about that. So yeah, let's go back to the slides. There we go. And keep on going. Okay. Splitting and joining. So, sorry, the animation isn't everything I wanted it to be. You can take a string and make it a list simply by splitting it. Now, there's a function called split. Split takes a delimiter. A delimiter is just the thing that separates Excuse me, it's just the thing that separates the elements that you want in the list. So in this case, I have first, comma, second. And when I split it and make it into a list, I want to split it at the comma so that my first element in the list is at index 0 and my second ele element in the list is at index 1. We have join, create a string from a list. So I have a list, and I want to join. Now, the dot notation here is a little bit odd because, oh, I'm sorry about that. Let's go back here. The dot notation here is a little bit odd. You'll see it has quote dot join. Join has to work against a string. So oftentimes, what you will do is when you're using join, you will see a colon dot join my list. And this says, hey, Python, take my list, join it together, and make it a string with nothing in between the elements and put it in my stir. So my stir is going to have first and second without a comma. Now, I could put something in here. I could put a space in there. I could put a comma and a space in there. And that would do the same thing. That would do first comma space second. OK, string formatting. We have something called format specifiers in Python. And this helps code readability. This helps code, um, yeah, this just helps when you format a string properly, this helps um, in, in readability for your user. And what a format, give me just one second, I'm sorry.
Um, sorry about that. So what we have here is a format is, is a string, and we have placeholders and placeholders format specifiers. A placeholder is just some something that is saying, I am going to take a, a, a value and I'm going to stick it in that placeholder. And, and that is what the first squiggly brace and the third squiggly brace is. And then the second one, the one in the middle, has colon dot to f. Now the colon dot to f says to Python, I am expecting a float and I want that float to only show two decimal places at the end. And this is very handy. If you are trying, if you've got a lot of numbers to display and you don't want a lot of decimal places after those numbers, that's a handy one to remember. And then this is the example. Now, the number of placeholders inside the string has to match the number of arguments in the format function call because this is, again, a function with the dot notation. So if I look at format, if we almost kind of ignore the, the print around it, and I look at the dot format, to the left of that dot, I have the string that Python is going to expect to put data in. And in format, I have, in this case, three arguments. Those three arguments are a number, a float, and a string. But more importantly, they match the number of times I have the format, um, the format placeholders. So the empty squiggly brace, the not empty squiggly brace with the format specifier, and the squiggly brace. So this format function can take as many arguments as you have squiggly, brace, squiggly braces. Um, so it could take one. It could take 20. It just all depends. There, there's not really, I mean, practically, there's a limit. But there's fu functionality-wise, there's not really a limit. So if I look at string formatting example, I have num equals 42, pi equals 3.14, and meister is pi day. So num is going to go into the first one, Pi is going to go into the second one, and my stir is going to go into the third one. And the output is I'm 42, and it's 3.14 pi day. Now, if I just make one, a, a, a real quick change here, and I have the order differently, I have num, my stir, and pi, and if I try and do that, Python's going to give me an error. The output is going to be a syntax error because that dot to f is expecting a float. So let's go look at simple string. Uh, simple, oh, wait a minute. Simple format. Is this it? Nope. I guess we already looked at simple string. Yeah, we already looked at simple string. So, and I promise we're getting to the labs here relatively quickly, because we are at the labs now. So, lab 2.12 is a special lab. Why is it a special lab? Because we don't give you all the information that you need to successfully complete this lab, because you need to know about how to do if and else when we haven't taught it to you yet. That's module three. I think they do like a paragraph of how to do that so that you can complete this lab, and I think that's inherently unfair. So in the scripts is the solution. Uh, at the, uh, up on the YouTube channel is the solution to 2.12, to lab 2.12. Um, it'll be posted up there um, tomorrow, but we will go through it anyway. So. This is about formatting strings. Yes.
Oh, no problem. This is, this is the one and only time I give out an answer in this class. And that is because the, the, we're not giving you everything you need to do this successfully. So you will see Lab 2.12, um, the link for it in the description of the video. So we're going to take in an input. And that input is either going to have three words or two words. And it's either going to be first name, middle name, last name, or first name and last name. What we're going to do to that input is we're going to split it. We're going to split it based on space and create a list. Once we create that list, then we're going to output the format based on the number of elements in the list. We're either going to do last name, first initial, dot middle initial, or we're going to do last name, comma, first initial. So here is the flowchart for it. And see that diamond in the middle? That's what we haven't covered yet. That's what we cover next week. So we're going to start. We're going to declare a name. We're going to input a single input of last name, first name, and middle name into name. We're going to declare a list. We're going to split name into a list using a space as a delimiter. The example we had here in the slides was a um, was using a comma, but you can just as easily use a space. The if here is what drives people crazy. If length of name list is greater than two. You don't know how to do that yet. We haven't talked about how to do that yet. Then we're either going to output last name, uh, sorry, last name, middle name, first name, or last name of zero, last name of one of zero. And this is again part of it because we're telling you that you have to use a multidimensional list when we haven't talked to you much about multidimensional lists. Or you're going to do last name of zero, comma, last name of index one at index zero. So you can get the first letter. Lab 2.13, write a program whose input is a string, which contains a character and a phrase, and whose output indicates the number of times the character appears in the phrase. So they're going to input a single string, which has a character and a phrase. So we're going to input myster. We're going to declare it. We're going to split this myster into a list. And then we're going to declare care count. And then we're going to set the care count to the character count. Now, the character is the first thing in, in that list. And the uh, phrase is the second thing in that list. And so what they only want is the number of times that character appears in that phrase. So you have to make sure you do the split. And then you have to make sure you do the count on the right list element, because you're going to have 0 and 1, because you're going to have the character is going to be at list L is going to be at 0, and the phrase is going to be at element 1. So you're going to have to ha make sure that when you do that count dot notation, you do it against the correct list element. So you're going to want to do it against the list at index 1 dot, uh, dot count for the list at index 0. All right. This one's a little fun. I know I'm weird. Um, prompt the user to enter two words in a number, storing each into separate variables. Then output three values on a single line separated by a space. So that's the first part. The second part is you're going to create two passwords. Now, it is my suggestion that when you create these passwords, you create them into a variable like password1 and password2 so that you can reuse them and you don't have to recalculate. The first one is going to be the first string underlying the second string. And the second password is going to be the number, the first string that came in, and then the number again. And then you're going to output the length of each password, which is why you want to create the passwords into a variable. So 
We're going to start. We're going to declare word one, word two, and num. We're going to have the user input word one, word two, and num. Now here I'm saying you should declare a password one and a password two variable. And then you're going to set password one to a new string with num, word one, and num. And you're going to set password two to word one underscore word two. Then you're going to output password one, you're going to output password two, you're going to output the length of password one, and you're going to output the length of password two. And to do all of that, you will need to look at Zybooks section 2.7. So does anybody have any questions? Okay, we're going to go once, going twice. If nobody has any questions, um, I'm going to end the call. I will post this tomorrow. If you're in my class, please feel free to reach out to me and ask me whatever questions you like. And also feel free. That's okay, Crystal. Uh, no problem at all. Um, feel free to look at any of the scripts and the challenges, um, and they'll all be up on the YouTube channel. So I'm going to end the meeting. I'm going to stop the recording.